This swerve, total heel here. Oh, yeah. This whole thing was just so bizarre. He was a total heel after they went to so much trouble to finally turn him babyface, after people wanted him to be babyface for like six months. Now he's just a total heel, and Brian's a total babyface, until Brian goes backstage, at which point he becomes a total asshole. I don't know what's going on. I watched Collision and Battle of the Belts. Mm -hmm. I did not watch Rampage. Shocking. You know that uh, on Rampage, there was a battle royal, your favorite match. No, there was not a battle royal. There was a a battle... A royal rampage. Royal rampage. Stop it. It's a battle royal. There was timed entry like a Royal Rumble. This one was 10 to 15 seconds max. What? It was a series of entrances. It was a Royal Rumble where everyone just came out like every 15 seconds? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Except during commercial breaks. Why? I, I need to go know. back and watch it now. No, you don't actually. <laughs> and I only watched because Nick was in it and he did that quote unquote angle with uh, Sabian. Nick got a. You watched because Nick was doing an angle with Kip Sabian. Nick is my boy and I'm going to support everything he does. Nick is my boy too. I would not watch Paisley <laughs> do an angle with Kip Sabian. I mean, I don't care. And all of a sudden, in the middle of absolutely nowhere, Queen Aminata grabs Athena and she lifts her up upside down. And she drops her on her fucking head with a Tiger Driver 91. <laughs> hmm. I don't want anyone to be fired, okay? <laughs> but whoever the agent is for this match needs to be harshly reprimanded. What in the fuck were you thinking? That is the whole Will Ospreay storyline. Hologram versus the Beast Mortos. Fuck yeah. They fucking have got this guy over. This guy is so over after two weeks, and all he's done is have awesome matches with two guys who are great opponents. Thunder Rosa versus, not making this up, Maya World, (laughs) a wrestler named after Jeff Jarrett's theme song. Ah, you stole my joke. (laughs) Sorry, dude. You always hear, AEW fans don't want to see this WWE bullshit. Mm. But the funny thing is, you know, all I hear about is how much people hated that MGF storyline with the devil. That thing did huge numbers. And everybody wants people to be turning off the show whenever Jericho comes on. He always does well. And the Maximum Male Models, which is a 100% Vince McMahon creation, they go to AEW doing a total Vince McMahon gimmick. And these people are eating it up. Dustin especially. He cradled this thing like a child, much like Mark Briscoe did with his own actual child earlier in the... Oh, yeah, we didn't even talk weekend. about that. Mark Briscoe's no, doing a, a promo, and he introduces the new member of the conglomeration. It's his child, Jay, and he holds his child. And he's he's like, he's being Mark Briscoe while holding this child. And he's shaking back and forth, and he's screaming, and he's being all wild! And the baby's just like... Dude, it's Mark. I know. He sees his dad do this every day. That's my point. It's like, this was normal behavior. My dad's just like this all the time. I've never seen a calmer baby in the hands of a maniac. In memory of Undertaker versus Undertaker at SummerSlam, which modern wrestler would you like to see face themselves, and who would play the twin? Neil Trauma? Serious answer. Sami Zayn versus El Generico with Orange Cassidy under the mask. It's not bad. That's not bad. Neil Trauma sounds like something you would get when you propose. (laughs) Sorry. You wake over there, Granny? He ain't wrong. Yep. Granny, if we did a match, Granny versus Granny, who would play the other Granny? Uh, Bianca. What? Bianca Belair. <laughs> I see no problems with this. It's the only name I can think of at a time like this. Except for the obvious. At a time like this. <laughs> granny, can you grow a ponytail? Yeah. <laughs> Cole even said he had uh, striped shoes and then... Pat McAfee mentioned those are zebras. You are right over there, Granny? Yeah. It'd be awesome if like WrestleMania we could see Jimmy Uso versus Jay. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Just perfect. Gold Dust versus Gold Dust. One of them is played by Booker T. What you doing over there, Granny? I dropped my paper. But you got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, let's see. Unnecessary censorship. So Oro f***s Ethan after the match and gets his ass just 
shit into the earth. <clears throat> Vinny! And Ethan is leaving, holding his <laughs> all confident. And then Oro just comes back to life, and now he <laughs> Ethan's ass. Oro jumps him from behind. Yep. Then he <laughs> his ass after cheap shotting the guy. Haha. <laughs> interesting. But when Andre rips the shirt and the cross off, he must have had long fingernails. Fucking slices Hogan right down the middle. Hogan's bleeding. And Roddy Piper... Hogan's on his knees. Ah! And Roddy Piper walks up and he goes, You're bleeding. You're bleeding. Jesus. <laughs> and they go and break. I was like, that was the greatest fucking thing I ever saw. It's incredible. 78,000 people bought tickets because of this. It's one of the greatest angles of all time. MGF comes out for a promo. The international championship is now the American title. And man, these fans love America. They did. Will Ospreay is trying to do his promo, and they're chanting for the USA. Yeah. Which completely threw off Will Ospreay. Will turns it into a DDT and hits the hidden blade, and Archer kicks out at one. This is not the match where I would have someone kick out of the hidden blade at one. Well, you know, he's just going to do bangers. He's just going to do what he's going to do. I think that we need to get this out of our system. No. It's not going to change. I mean, yeah. Kyle Fletcher, before my eyes, turned into a superstar. He cut the most awesome promo. He still has a horrific haircut. Well, yes. But it's it's um, it's um the least horrific one he's had. <laughs> it's very clear that Tony Khan lives and dies on Twitter, and his presumption is that these fans know everything about everything. When Brian Danielson announced that his contract expired today, this isn't breaking news. I mean, it, we talked about it on Observer Radio. Dave had it in the Observer. None of these fans had any idea. They were shocked that his contract expired the next day, and he had promised his family he would never sign another long-term contract again. So that's the kind of thing where I think that it might be good to pay attention to your audience and realize that maybe they're not quite as hardcore as you presume all of them are. Mm. So Brian says, I have a promise for you. If I do not win the AEW World Championship, I will never wrestle again. The crowd is actually less shocked at this than they were the first one about the contract, but they were still shocked. Swerve is taken aback, but Ryan repeats it, makes it clear, it's title versus career. This Swerve, total heel here. Oh, yeah. This whole thing was just so bizarre. He was a total heel after they went to so much trouble to finally turn him babyface, after people wanted him to be babyface for like six months. Now he's just a total heel. And Brian's a total babyface until Brian goes backstage, at which point he becomes a total asshole. I don't know what's going on. Max Caster is doing some gimmick on Twitter where he is calling himself the best wrestler alive. It's some sort of bit. I don't know what it is. I don't follow his Twitter. I have no earthly idea. But he has now brought it to national television with no explanation. We're not in on this joke. And I'm sitting here watching this going, bro, we don't know what you're doing on your Twitter, and you're coming off as a total delusional heel. And I think he's supposed to be a baby face. So Renee says, why did you do what you did to Tony? And Mariah says, what more needs to be explained? Do you not watch the show? It's been very clear. <laughs> I was like... This is a troll job. It's spectacular <laughs> is what this is right here. This is just a random, forgettable, nothing on the line, dynamite mean event. Why are you doing these dangerous spots in them? And then they remind us, Darby has world title and TNT title matches coming up. Why not save these spots for those matches? Still going back. I said bringing Hangman back in that tournament's a bad idea. Everybody's going to want him to win. It makes no sense for him to make his big comeback just to do a job a week later. People are going to want to see him and Swerve, and they're not going to get it. And then he's doing another job here to Darby Allen, clean in the middle of the ring. I mean, I don't know what they're doing with Hangman. They were just out there having fun. And Hank and Tank, as gimmick interview guys, they were fucking great. <laughs> they did a great job. That is true. I was highly entertained by these guys. Ethan Page comes out to Barry Metaphor. Promises this is the best look you're ever going to get at my NXT title, which is an as obvious a signal could be that I am going to hit you with this belt. Oro's no dummy, so he ducks the belt shot. He hits a schoolboy. The women count three. 
Place goes crazy. They all run away. This feud is awesome. And it I'm, is. I'm kind of sad they're blowing it off next week. Javon Evans hype video. This was awesome. No one else on this roster could be Javon Evans. There is only one Javon Evans. Character-wise, interview-wise, wrestling-wise, he is absolutely, completely, totally different from everybody else, not even in the entire company, but like in all of wrestling. Is there another Javon? There is not. Not that I'm aware of. Don't fuck this guy up. The Joe Henry concert. So he sings a song about Scotland and TNA and Shawn Michaels and Booker T. Booker was giddy that he got his. <laughs> Booker, not a not a uh, Joe Ka- Joe Hendry fan. No, and uh, uh, Joe's taking note of this, and they've alluded to this in, on commentary. But there was someone did a deep pick video of Booker T being Joe Hendry in the Joe Hendry video. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Kendall Gray versus Jada Parker. So Kendall. Three-time NAIA champion wrestler. You can just watch her move, and she moves like a high-level athlete. And as far as like someone wrestling for two months, she is the best female WWE wrestler that I have seen after two months since Kalani. And the main event is Thea Hale versus Roxanne Perez. This ruled. This match was awesome. It was like we got a great one-on-one match between a 20-year-old and a 22-year-old. Yeah. Who are better than 80% of the main roster and are stuck down here in NXT. Yeah. One of the best episodes of NXT you'll see all year. Yeah, this was an excellent, excellent television show. I enjoyed it greatly. 